Welcome to part two of All About the Afterlife. And we've got my son, Eric, in the afterlife, who is quite the expert. And of course, we have wonderful Michelle Gray, who is an awesome channel and healer. She has her information in the description box, and it will also be on the screen for you guys. So, Eric. And I guess we can have his cohort. I'm, I'm not sure how anonymous this needs to be, but anyway, uh, somebody who has recently transitioned is going to give his perspective as well. So what's the most fun thing for you guys to do as spirits? Eric's got a big list. Oh boy. <laughs> you can open the big list. Um, Eric says, well, he says, uh, what he has a lot of fun doing is interacting. Okay. For for Eric, that is a big one. Eric loves the communication, and he says for him, uh, when somebody is just learning to have awareness of who he is, and he's rubbing his hands together, like when somebody is just on that peak of awakening, and they're just starting to ask those questions. And they're getting curious. Eric loves to swoop in and sprinkle a little magic, a little poke on the shoulder, mm -hmm. a little light flicker. Um, he loves to pop into dreams. That is something that Eric finds because it's very healing. And he knows that yeah. even though his pranks sometimes are silly and he does get pretty silly at times, but there's that purpose to it. And he's just showing there's so many seeds that get planted in mm -hmm. that communication and he says for him as a teacher and also a student in spirit, he really enjoys helping others evolve. And he says at this time, evolving in the soul on earth, he says it's like giving somebody their wings. Oh. And that, he says, is amazing. He says it's very fulfilling for the soul. But he says there's lots of other things that he does as well. He says that there's some other souls here that really like to get together and have a little fun. He says things like cosmic skydiving. Mm. Um, he says that they will get themselves into um, like a simulation, he's showing me, of jumping off of planets, <laughs> of jumping off of, he's showing me like being on a cliff, but everything oh, yeah. that he's jumping into is like nothingness. But they're all like falling like, oh, no, oh, no, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> like he says like going through the experience of, well, wait a minute, my parachute's not going to work. And he goes, no, of course, we're fine. We're all yeah, fine. Yeah, no, that's funny. Yeah. So he says um, some things like that. Um, he also says that uh, campfires, he says creating a campfire and sitting around and roasting marshmallows. He goes, do we do that? Yeah goes we do that That's we do cool. a lot of those things he says um whether there are new souls coming in or whether he says i'm hanging it with my friend jesus he says we like right, to it's about together. to storm and, and this one is very scared of storms oh well, okay, it's about to storm here okay. too anyway um yeah so talk about your senses and emotions and how those are different when mm. once you're in spirit and Grant, you can pop in any time. Well, what Grant is saying is that he is really understanding, like the volume is turning up for him with the vibration. So he says everything comes through with this sense of vibration. And Eric says that the senses, are um, they're not the physical senses. He says it's more vibration. And so everything is felt through your entirety. So your awareness, everything goes through vibration. He says, color has vibration. Color speaks to you. Mm. He says, everything has a voice. Everything has a vibration. So he says, to be able to understand that from uh, our human point of view, he says, imagine that there is no language with speaking, but everything is coming through your mind, but you're feeling it all. So he says, when we're hearing you speak to us, when you're hearing, uh, like if you're praying, if you're talking, he says, whatever the tone is of what you're saying, we're feeling the emotion, the vibration uh -huh. of the tone. Yeah. We're feeling what's behind it. We're, we're even feeling 
What's the reason why this is happening, even if you don't know why this is happening? So he says there's times where we can anticipate what it is that you need in that moment so that we can help you. So he says, think about when you get the chills or think about when you get these gut feelings. He says, that's how it feels for us, but it's turned right up so Mm -hmm. that we're, we are in the experience completely. Very cool. So when, how long does it take for you to become aware of all your past lives? Uh, Eric says, uh, normally it's a process. He says not very often. Is it something that comes in one piece? He says most souls, um, dependent on the type of transition. Now, he says child souls, baby souls tend to have the awareness immediately because there is not the, um, he says the baggage. Yeah. There is not the excess to work through and to drop off. And so he says the baby souls, um, they have more of a smooth piecing. So he says it's like a warm transition, very smooth. And that awareness just keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. And he says, so for many of us, it's more of a, uh, a receiving. And then he says a time of rest. And then there is a connecting with those on earth in a time of rest. He says it kind of goes into this back and forth process depending on what the soul requires, because he says different types of transitions might require a different type of treatment. Maybe right. your soul needs a little bit of healing. So you know, like says, yours did, Eric, you had to go through this yes. black, you know, spiritual car wash. Yes. Grant, did you have to go through any kind of healing first? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. He says, um, and there still is a little bit of healing. He okay. says for him, um, he calls it a very light process. Okay. Um, he keeps showing me soda crackers. Like, I don't okay. know why he's showing me that, but he's showing me these little square soda crackers and he's snapping them like quickly. So uh, that must be his version of things being light, light soda cracker. <laughs> oh, okay. That's funny. Yeah. So Grant, are you uh, aware of any of your past lives that kind of influenced your one that you just had? He would yeah. like to tell you that, um yes and part of that comes to his awareness of his connection with the family and he would like to let you know that he was also present in atlantis oh my god i was going to ask that yes yes who else yes. was in my family was was a uh, it was my husband yes oh wow yes uh any of my uh, kids yes yes all of my um, kids yes wow in, in different facets he says yeah, that course. um there was a great deal of healing that took place in that lifetime um he says that we came together in different ways with the same purpose to be able to heal with the um benefit of crystals of vibration of light which is what i'm doing now yes i think i was doing the same thing then in a scale in a scalar field with yes Yes. and i'm trying to figure out how i can utilize that prior ability do I need to look at, I mean, imagine symbols of Atlantis going into the scalar field or just, I don't know. I mean, um, encoding the crystals. Uh, I don't know. He says light. Um, you were very good at using reflection of light to collapse time, to oh. collapse space. And so he's actually showing crystals set up and there's what looks like mirrors around it. And there's light that's bouncing off. And it's creating like a vortex, creating a strength of energy. So he says, um, yes, um, symbols. Yes, you worked with symbols. But he says that the light is something that you almost like scientifically experimented with. Okay. You enjoyed working with the light and with the strength of the crystals. Um, You also had, uh, he's showing like a pouch that you had, which kind of looks velvet. And you would sleep with the crystals. Oh. So you would keep a lot of the crystals with you. Okay. And at nighttime, you would ask your astral body to be able to infuse the crystals. So it's like you would travel with them. 
Okay. He says, um, there is magic to you. He calls you Miss Elisa. There is magic oh. to you that you are now discovering. And what he says that his participation with you is he was in your community. Um, he calls himself a friend. And also he calls himself a colleague of interest in healing mm -hmm. as well. He says that you also helped him. He's talking about having a limb severed in mm -hmm. that lifetime. And oh. you helped him regain uh, energetically his limb back. Okay. Like reattaching a soul fragment. Yes. Sort of. yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I do now, too, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. part of the deal. Well, that's interesting. I was going to ask all of that. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Eric, what did you do? Were you a healer in Atlantis, too? Yes. Um, Eric worked with you directly. What about uh, Christina and Michelle? Um, Christina and Michelle, they didn't work with you as intensely as Eric did but they were in the same direction. Um, Eric says they worked a lot with like message boards. Okay. Um, I'm seeing like rocks uh, and there's symbols painted on rocks and Ooh. moving rocks around it. Eric says it was all in the form of healing. Um, Even Lucas. Cause he's not in the medical. Field. Lucas dealt with food. Oh, Oh, uh, Lucas dealt with nutrition and he was, um, he loves cooking part of harvesting. Uh, he would grow plants, medicinal mm. plants he likes to and that. would harvest food that would be nourishing and healing for individuals, particularly the weak and the ill. What about my husband? He was an architect. Interesting. All right. So anything else you want to talk about, about heaven, um, emotions? Y'all want to describe what is, what, how emotions have changed? Grant says that um, something he'd like to describe that he can understand with emotions is he says that he can perceive grief. He says um, he can understand the heavy emotions he recalls them he says we don't forget we don't forget the emotions eric says after some time um it is a little harder to hold on to the emotions to feel them but we do understand them but what grant is showing is he says think of a basketball and when you are like hot potato with a basketball he says you can catch the basketball and hold it for a second but then you have to bounce it away. You can't hold on to the emotions. You can get the taste of it, the flavor of it. He also says that grief has a bitter vibration to it. Mm, and it, he's actually me. giving me a bitter taste in the mouth. Oh, yeah. It, it's very, it's bitter. Mm -hmm. um, he says, but has, he has purpose. He understands that. But he says it is bitter. And he says, um, grief and forgiveness, uh, when you have, anger towards somebody he says that is the most bitter energy for the one that is holding on to anger mm. and holding on to grief he says oh. it, it is a um he calls it decaying it's a decaying energy oh wow it will decay your body so you talk about you like the anger that comes with somebody you're upset that they they passed or um he says it's the it's when one experiences grief and anger and they will not allow themselves to move through it. Oh, it's when it gets held onto and he's showing the decaying over the process of time when it's not released. He said oh, it yeah. is the most yeah. toxic of energy. Yeah. Okay. I bet. Um, but that's all negative emotions. You guys could feel the good ones, right? And oh yes. Hold on to those. Oh yes. Yes. Um, he says that it, to understand where uh, he's showing me a ladder on the ladder of emotions, he says they stay in the upper rungs of the ladder. Yeah. He says that's where there is a, a sense of euphoria. Um, he says, he says it's not um, when we feel joy on earth, he says there's often um a sense of groundedness that we need to be able to function on earth. 
And so he says the difference here with that joy is that that groundedness is not necessary. It's not needed because we don't have to process things. We yeah. don't have to um, take action in the same way that we would in the physical. So Eric says it's um, he's tickling. He's like, it's like the joy of being tickled all the time. Oh. That's really the energy that they're able to exist in. Wow. I don't know if I could stand that. I hate being tickled. Oh. Eric says it's without the physical sensation, mom. It's okay. without the physical sensation. I got but you. Yeah. He says you, you'd be fine. Trust me because you've done it many times. You love oh, it. Well, I guess I have. So wh where is your home base, both of you? I mean, you have a, you used to be in a log cabin by a lake, Eric. I don't know. You probably just, are you floating around on a cloud or the harp? Um, it, Eric actually says he still does have the log cabin. He also has an apartment in the city. Okay. Um, he also uh, likes to hang out at home. He says he's often at home because that's a grounding point for him. Um, because he is very connected, he says, his soul, because of the work that he does, is very connected into Earth. And so yeah. he does True. spend a lot of time, he says, floating around with the family that's oh, what he does that's um nice. he says that grant right now uh has created a front porch um he's created a place to relax and he actually has a tv screen in front of him that he clicks channels mm -hmm. and he's able to view everything that's going on um he says that he'll create some spaces for himself as he progresses with the soul, uh, Eric is actually showing him a map of all kinds of things mm -hmm. that he can do. Um, Grant also has a home that he's showing me right now that feels like somewhere that he was with a grandmother. Um, it looks like a location of the past, a location in his life. Okay. Where he spent some time in since his passing that he has visited. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to, do you want to ask any questions, Michelle, before we close about heaven? Um, I'm not as creative. I mean, I can't come up with stuff. Yeah. Like I usually can because of what transpired. It, it's, it's a, I always say to Eric, I wish there was um, something invented where we could like plug in the visuals into I a know. screen so everybody could see the visuals. Is that's I do a lot of drawing. And I draw yeah. a lot of yeah, the visuals. And you're so good at it. That's the yeah. best way that I can that I can kind of show people what it is that Eric shows yeah. me or what different spirits show me. But um, I don't really have any questions in particular. But Eric says we should attempt a live or something to answer some questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. that yeah. Strike. I'll, I'll yeah. put it up for review. But all right. Well, thank you, Grant. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Michelle. You guys, yeah. please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 100K. We're almost there. We're like 91.4 or something like that. All right. Love you all. Love you. Bye. Bye.